Hello, everybody, and welcome to To Be Like Christ for an exciting day. Exciting for a couple reasons. Well, first of all, this should be the last video where my face is missing. And so maybe the videos will get a little bit more engaging in our next study. And, and it, it really is more exciting because this is our last day studying through First Chronicles. We are on First Chronicles chapter 29 today. And we're going to go to the book of First Kings next because chronologically it kind of flows in that uh, in in that order. So first Kings the Lord willing will start tomorrow. Got a new outline, uh, new characters to talk about, new places to well we'll be in generally the same area <laughs> to be honest, but what's even more exciting is that our win section is finally going to get some variety <laughs> instead of being essentially the same as it was in First Chronicles. So if you stuck it out all the way through First Chronicles, congratulations. I think it is fair to say that there are certain books of the Bible that capture modern readers' attention and are more memorable to modern readers than others. And I, I think it's fair to say that First Chronicles usually isn't high on that list. <laughs> A lot of that is because it repeats many of the things that we've already read in the life of David. And there's also just a lot of details that modern readers can sometimes find difficult to make any application of. And so if you were struggling maybe a little bit with this book to make it through, but you made it through anyway, excellent job. I can guarantee you that your, your, your study in the rest of the Old Testament and in the New Testament is going to be enriched by the fact that you went through First Chronicles. So with that, let's talk about our last chapter because we have a lot here. The PDF is available out on the internet at tobelikechrist.com for anybody who wants it. And well, let's do it one last time, our win section. <laughs> the book of First Chronicles was written several hundred years after the reign of King David, but it records the events of David's reign and, and a few others of his lifetime, but mostly it's about his reign. 1055 to 1015 BC are the dates that we're going to go with. Those are approximate dates. And the final chapters of First Chronicles document the very end of David's reign, the very end of David's life. Now, as we go down to our key character section, this chapter is going to pick up on basically where we left off in chapter 28. So our characters are going to be the same. David, who's the second king of Israel and Judah. Solomon, who's David's son, who's going to take over for David after, well, he's going to become the third king of Israel and Judah. And then government officials who had gathered to hear David speak uh, for this special occasion. Our map is going to be very similar to last chapter as well. David assembled all of these officials of Israel and Judah in the city of Jerusalem, which was the capital of the kingdom. He gathered them to present Solomon as their next king and as the man who was going to take on the temple project and finally get the temple built. Now we can move over to our last outline in First Chronicles, and there's a lot to cover here. So let's try to be as quick as possible. I'll try not to ramble about, you know, go down any rabbit holes or anything like that. Verses one through nine, it's our first section. The officials of Israel give generously to the temple project. So David told the officials that were gathered there in Jerusalem that he had done his best to, to gather provisions for the temple project. He did this in part because his son was young, Solomon was young, and he needed help making the temple into the magnificent structure that had been envisioned and that was worthy of the name of the Lord. The kingdom had stored up resources, gold, silver, bronze, iron, and, and other things, no doubt, David even David himself gave generously from his own fortune 3,000 talents of gold and 7,000 talents of silver. And just so you know, most people think a talent was around 72 pounds. Uh, depends on kind of whose talent you go with and which historian, but you, if it was anywhere close to that, think of that, 3,000 times 72 that's a lot of gold. <laughs> David encouraged his official, the officials of Israel to make free will offerings of their own, which they did, and they gave very generously. So they gave 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, which was a smaller measurement, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, 100 thousand talents of iron and they also brought gemstones to the treasurer and those gemstones are going to be used in the temple we'll see that in the uh, the opening chapters of first kings so verses 1 through 9 cover this collection verses 10 through 21 david and israel bless the lord 
So David prayed a prayer of blessing to God in front of all of the people. He prays God for his greatness, his power, his glory, his victory, his majesty. And he acknowledged that all the riches that had been contributed to the temple project, they already belonged to God. And David acknowledged that everything that human beings own is ultimately the Lord's. He said this in verse 14, For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. David asked the Lord to give his people pure hearts. He finished by asking for God's blessing on Solomon, that he would be able to finish the temple and lead the people according to God's commandments, his statutes, and his testimonies. And when David finished, he commanded all of the people to bless the Lord. And the day after that, the people offered lots and lots of animal sacrifices, a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, a thousand lambs as offerings to God. Now this takes us to verses 22 through 25. We're almost done with the chapter. Solomon is made king again. The people of Israel anointed Solomon king for what appears to be the second time here in 1 Chronicles 29. The first time is, there's a reference there to 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 34, which seems to predate this time. So anyway, if that was the case, this the people here were reaffirming Solomon's reign. Solomon, quote, sat on the throne of the Lord as king in place of David, his father. All David's officers and officials pledged their allegiance to Solomon, and we're told that God blessed his kingdom and made him very great. And we're definitely going to talk about that in 1 Kings. Now, finally, the very end of 1 Chronicles, sad section, one of our, our favorite Bible uh, individuals dies, the death of David, verses 26 through 30. After reigning over the people of God for 40 years, David, quote, died at a good age, full of days, riches, and honor. That's verse 28. David's life was documented in the Chronicles of Samuel, the Chronicles of Nathan, and the Chronicles of Gad the seer. Now, we don't have all of those texts. We have some of them, uh, but not all of them. That's interesting because it does let us know that there were other histories written. Not all of those are necessarily included in the Bible. It always amazes me how quickly the death of significant Bible individuals is documented, and then the text just kind of moves on. That's definitely the case here with David's death. There's not, you know, a ton of detail, just very to the point. Now, we are going to talk about David a little bit more in 1 Kings. It seems like we're going to step back in time a little bit, and so don't worry. He's, he's not quite gone yet, <laughs> and truthfully in the Bible, David's never really gone. Well, I'm sure that this study is probably going to be over five minutes. I apologize for that, but there's just so much to to cover, and I want to do the chapter justice at least. So let's do our, our application now, and we'll forget about the time. <laughs> it's the last chapter. You know, I get some grace on the last chapter as we sum everything up, as if I never go over time. But any, anyway, application. Are you building anything that will benefit future generations? Often we are so self-focused that we, we only undertake projects that will have a realized benefit in our lifetime. I know I can get stuck kind of thinking like this, but David wasn't thinking like that. David made the temple possible by, pre by preparing for it years in advance. What could you be doing today that would allow someone to accomplish something in the future that could never be achieved in one lifetime. That's the thing we want to think about for application. In your work for the church, think of yourself as a foundation layer. Organize and structure your work in a way that future generations can build on it rather than it just, you know, all terminating and falling apart whenever you kick the bucket. You or I, you or I kick the bucket. God's work is going to continue when you and I are dead, assuming Jesus doesn't come back. What can we do today to maximize the kingdom's impact in future generations? In order to discover the answer to that, we have to look outside of ourselves, outside of our one small lifetime, and broaden our perspective to see ourselves in God's larger generational story. So that's that's definitely a big thing to think about. That'll, that'll definitely tide you over until we start our first king study. Well, we didn't make five minutes. I went down some rabbit holes. That's all right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, on our last study of First Chronicles. Thanks, everybody, for supporting this channel, for supporting the things that we're doing. There's more and more people on the website and on the YouTube channel every day, and I, I hope and I pray that we are 
benefiting people and helping people grow closer to God, helping people understand his word for themselves, and that, that this can be something that continues on into the future. So with all of your blessings, your prayers, uh, your likes on my video, your comments on my videos, it, it contributes to that. So thank you. Thank you so much. And Lord willing, I'll talk to you again. First Kings chapter one starts tomorrow.